I got a comment from June Bugs in July that simply said, do agar and umiboshi. So today we are going to tackle one of those two, umiboshi on WTF. Guys, we got a really interesting sponsor for today. It's a company called Kitchen Table Bakers. You can check them out online at kitchentablebakers.com. What they do is, they, I mean, they basically reinvented crackers. It's a pretty basic thing to reinvent. How do they do this? Well, they created a cracker that's completely wheat-free, completely gluten-free. How would they do this? Well, they got rid of flour. They make a cracker entirely out of aged Parmesan cheese. They basically bake them into these really wonderful, crisp, super flavorful uh, rounds that you could put really anything on. This, this would be great with you know a piece of melon or it would be great with a little bit of prosciutto. I think that something that's less potent would complement this really well. Maybe something sweet, maybe something a little bit astringent. This is what the crackers look like. You can kind of see through them. They have a good amount of crunch to them if you break them apart. Um, and they're really flavorful. They're super delicious. So you guys should check them out online at kitchentablebakers.com. Get your hands on some of their crackers. Bring them out at your next party. People are gonna love them. Kitchentablebakers.com. So today we're talking about ume. Now, ume is a species of tree that's in the apricot family. It's sometimes known as the Chinese plum or the Japanese apricot. And botanically, it's actually closer to being an apricot than it is a plum. Now, there are a lot of culinary uses for ume. One of them is this drink called umeshu, which is kind of a liquor made out of the plum. They kind of steep the plum in some alcohol for a period of time and produce this really tasty product. But really the most interesting way that I've ever had it, or at least the most notable, is a staple. It's something called umeboshi, and it's basically pickled plums. Now, the flavor of umeboshi is super pungent. I mean, it, it's a really pronounced flavor. It's very sour, it's very tart, and it's also salty. Um, it's generally, you know, a garnish or a condiment. It's not the focus. You're not gonna eat a whole bowl of these things. I think some people munch on them like pickles, but you'll commonly see them maybe inside of a bento box, or you'll see them inside of a rice ball, um, or maybe you'll have them on the side when you're eating something like sushi. Sometimes in those bento boxes, they'll actually sandwich out the bit of rice into this rectangular shape and put the ume right in the center of it, and you kind of get this, well, this shape that's like a Japanese flag. Traditionally, the way that you make umeboshi is you take the little ume, pack them in a barrel with salt, weigh it down, and that extracts all the moisture, kind of pickles it, adds the flavor, and the product is born. Today, these days, modern times, people make umeboshi by actually using a, like a vinegar pickling solution as opposed to just packing them in salt. You'll also put a little bit of purple perilla, shiso, which we covered in an episode, inside to add some color. Fun fact, eating umeboshi in Japan is kind of like eating an apple a day in America. It's something that almost everybody does. Uh, it's something that is supposed to have health benefits. It's supposed to cure hangovers. It's supposed to help keep your immune system up. Even Japanese samurai warriors eat it to help recover from battles. That is, if samurai warriors were still fighting today. Since this is America and it is summertime, we are going to use umeboshi in something that we love here, which is coleslaw. So we're going to add the flavors of umeboshi to a classic coleslaw. In a bowl, add some chopped up cabbage, a three inch piece of chopped up ginger, three pitted and minced umeboshi plums, a palmful of toasted sesame seeds, a fourth of a cup of rice vinegar, fourth of a cup of mirin, the juice of one lemon, and salt and pepper. Mix this together and place it in a bag for easier storage or into the fridge overnight. If you want, you can kind of mix the ingredients together inside of the bag to ensure even flavor dispersion. And tomorrow, you want to just season it with a little salt and pepper, make sure it is up to taste and par, and enjoy. Tune in tomorrow for another What's This Food? Check out our sponsor, kitchentablebakers.com. And if you have something you want me to cover, you can post it in the comments below, or join us on Facebook by going to danieldelaney.com Facebook. I will see you there.